For the setup of our DDoS simulation, we have four virtual machines. One is the Kali attacker, actually doing the DDoS. The second is the Kali router, which will route the packets to either the assets or honeypot. Then we have the assets slash defender Kali VM. The last VM that we have is the Honeypot VM. The attacker will send a send flood through the Kali router to our assets slash defender. Upon sensing a send flood, the Kali router will set a limit and redirect the traffic to the Honeypot based off of IP tables. The IP tables rule will let a certain amount of traffic to the Honeypot and then back to the assets and defender. We also have a scappy script running on the Kali router that will check how many times there's been a flip-flop between the assets defender and Honeypot. Once the flip-flop has hit 10 times, we know that this is not no longer a flash flood and that this is somebody that is trying to send flood our defense slash asset. The final piece in this setup is that once the 10 tries or the 10 send floods have come through to our assets, the attacker will be permanently routed to the honeypot and no longer allowed to send flood the assets slash defender. Next, we will move on and we can see the simulation in action. This is a recording from our attacker scappy script. As you can see, it does a send flood on random port from the video. This is us initiating the sin flood attack. You can see that we put the IP of the assets in the attack. You can see that it has now started the sin flood. In this next section, we'll take a look at the router. As you can see here, you can see our IP tables rules. Upon entering our scappy script using Vim, you can see our scappy script. This is outlined furthermore in our document, and you can pause the video to take a closer look at how we are doing the rerouting after 10 tries. You can see that we have the IP address of the honeypot, the assets, defined so we can count the number of flip-flops or oscillations between the two, uh, two VMs. Upon hitting that 10 times, we get rid of the first rule that has the limit burst and we are able to reroute all traffic from that IP address, the attacker, directly to our honeypot for the rest of the time being. In the next part, we will run the simulation. We'll start by running the Python script to do the reroute and traffic based on the oscillations between the honeypot and the assets. We will then move over to the honeypot and restart our Wireshark so we can see the traffic coming in. We will then move on to the Kali Defender and start Wireshark as well so we can see the traffic coming into it. We will then move over to our Attacker VM so we can start attacking the Assets slash Defender. You can see the IP address for the Assets Defender in the Attacker script command line. We have now started doing the attack. You can see that the Defender slash Assets is getting hit by the attack directly because the bucket size has not been hit on the limit burst. The limit burst for this scenario right now is at 100, but this is adjustable depending, depending on your needs. It will take a second for the rule to kick in. As you can see now, on our left hand screen, the router has detected that it has hit this 100 limit and it will start rerouting to the honeypot. It gave it 10 chances up in the top corner to stop sin flooding and go back to the assets without doing a multitude of requests. But it did not do that because our attacker script just continuously hits. You can see all of the traffic is now hitting our honeypot and no longer sin flooding our assets slash defender. We can take a look at the honeypot traffic, see that this was the last traffic. We can take a look at our defender traffic and then you can see that all of the route rerouting has happened to the honeypot after 10 times oscillating between. 